If you have ever wanted to let someone in charge know how tough it is to get around, now you can. A bipartisan group is trying to raise awareness of the nation's failing infrastructure. Their solution, a smartphone app, of course, that lets you reach out to members of Congress. Chip Reed is in New Jersey this morning driving across the Pulaski Skyway. Chip, good morning to you. Hi. Well, good morning, Gail and Charlie. We're actually in a little tunnel leading to the Pulaski Skyway. We will be on the Skyway in just a moment. You know, back in 1932, when the Pulaski Skyway was built, it was declared the most beautiful steel structure in America. Today, it is deemed structurally obsolete, not up to modern standards, and would take about a billion dollars to get it up to those modern standards. It's a good example of what's wrong with infrastructure in America today, and if a a lot of money isn't spent soon, things are only going to get worse. Catastrophic failure of infrastructure is not something you think about until it actually happens. The bridge collapse this past May near Seattle, Washington. A 2008 water main break that turned a suburban Washington, D.C. road into a life-threatening torrent. What is the state of infrastructure in this country today? We are really falling behind and falling apart. Marsha Hale is with the bipartisan group Building America's Future, which raises awareness of the state of U.S. infrastructure. We've got a construction site right ahead of us here. She we took us on a ride along to demonstrate their new smartphone app called I'm Stuck. It allows people to send a message directly to their member of Congress when they endure long delays on roadways, planes, subways, or trains, all with the hope of convincing Congress to do something about it. Congress needs to act. Transportation is not a partisan issue. Infrastructure is not a partisan issue. There are no Democratic bridges, no Republican highways. The American Society of Civil Engineers gave the U.S. a D-plus for overall infrastructure this year after a comprehensive review that included the nation's roads, bridges, and waterways. Their solution? Invest an estimated $3.6 trillion by the year 2020. Patrick Natal is the executive director. The issue is infrastructure hasn't been on the table. We need to get it on the table for consideration in discussions for how do you fund it. Both the House and Senate are working on transportation spending bills for 2014, but even if it passes, the money is a small fraction of what experts say is needed. One barrier is that some key conservatives are calling for fiscal restraint, but others, including Pennsylvania Republican Congressman Patrick Meehan, say a failure to invest will hurt in the long run. These are tough challenges, and we have to find ways to be responsible stewards of taxpayer dollars. But investment in infrastructure is something that has gone back since the, the beginning of the founding of the nation. One out of every four bridges in Pennsylvania is deemed structurally deficient, including the Falls Bridge in Meehan's suburban Philadelphia district. Time spent sitting in traffic because of detours or time spent because of the bridge being down has a huge impact uh, economically and globally. Former Democratic Pennsylvania Governor Ed Rendell says those delays are costing the average American commuter $818 a year in lost time at work and home. He testified at a hearing last week and said investing in America's infrastructure is a matter of economic survival. If we want to continue to be a first-rate economic power, if we want to protect our public, if we want to improve the quality of life of our citizens and our environment, if we want to create good, well-paying jobs that can't be outsourced, it is time to do something. And you could see the uh, just a moment ago the superstructure of the Pulaski Skyway here. Now, one thing to keep in mind about infrastructure is that eight years ago the United States was first in the world. Today. It is 14th and falling fast. And by the way, Charlie and Gail, if anybody wants to use that app, I'm stuck, don't use it while you're driving. Get a passenger to do it or pull over to a safe place on the side of the road.